Today on The Joy of Editing, we're going to take a first look at the new update for the TK Gen Fill Panel, version 1.2.0. A lot of great improvements here. You don't want to miss this one. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Thank you for joining me today. Now, I have a really great video for you because Tony has been working hard on the TK Gen Fill panel, and he's come up with a great new update. It's fantastic, and you don't want to miss this. Now, one of the best parts about this panel is it's absolutely free, and you can click on my affiliate link in the description below. It'll take you over to Tony Kuiper's web store where you could pick it up. And if you see any other items there you want, like the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, or any training videos, if you use my promo code DK15, you'll save 15% off your entire purchase. But you don't have to purchase anything. But the TK9 plugin for Photoshop is a great companion to use with the TK Gen Fill panel. Before you hop on over and get the panel, make sure you watch this video first so you can learn how to use it. Before I start, Tony wanted me to relay this information to you. To get version 1.2.0, you have two options. One, if you haven't got the TK Gen Fill Panel yet, click on my affiliate link and get the TK Gen Fill Panel. It's free. If you already have the TK Gen Fill Panel, use your original download link from your email. That's important. If you can't find the email, download it for free from Tony Kuiper's website. Click on my affiliate link in the description below. Both methods will give you version 1.2.0 for free. Using the original link will help reduce server load. Now that is good for Tony, so help him out there. Please refrain also from requesting manual reactivation of links to avoid overwhelming Tony Kuiper's email. So please don't flood Tony with uh, a bunch of emails, okay? Installing version 1.2.0 will replace any previous version, so no need to uninstall if unsure about your version, check the plugins flyout menu and I'll show you how to do that. Now, here's how to check to see if you have the latest version. See the TK Gen Fill panel? See the hamburger menu right here? Click on this and it tells you this is version 1.2.0. So if you have that, you have the new panel. All right. And also, if you'll notice right here, instructions. PDF English. If you click on this, it'll take you over to Tony's website and you're going to get this pop up request for permission. The TK Gen Fill panel wants to open and it's going to go over to Tony's website and it's going to open up the link here. So make sure you click allow and that'll take us over and there we're going to see the instruction manual. So there you can read through the instruction manual which I highly recommend that you do that. Well, thanks for bearing with me, but this is information that you needed to know. Now let's check this panel out. Are you ready? I have a couple different examples. Now in the first example, I want to turn this image, this photograph into like an oil painting, watercolor painting. So what we can do is see right here where it says 1024. If you click this, this will make the longest side 1024 pixels. Now, if you have the combo or CX panel, you could click this plus button a couple times, a few times, and make the file look a little bit bigger or make the image look a little bit bigger. The reason for that is if you go into the 1024 size, you're going to get much better results when you want to turn this into oil painting or watercolor painting, which I'll show you here. Now, we have these numbers here like uh, 15, 20, 25, up to 100%. Now, if I come here and click on, let's say 20% and we come here to the prompt and I type oil painting and we'll click generate. But notice we have an overlay over here. Now that's a 20%. Now if I click 15%, you can see there's an overlay at 15%, 35%. See how the overlay gets stronger and I could come to 65, it gets stronger yet, up to 100%. You're still going to see your image through there, by the way. Tony programmed it that way so you could still see an image, but it is selected at 100%. Now, if you don't select anything here, it will automatically be selected at 100%, which is not good. So you'll get a mess if you click oil painting and do that. So try that and you'll find out what, what that gives you. Okay, so you'll find if you use these lower percentage numbers, it's going to stay more truer to the original photograph. So let's try 
Let's try 15%. I've already typed oil painting. We'll click generate. I'm not going to make you wait the entire 20 to 25 seconds. Now we're going to get three results. Now there's no need to use the contextual taskbar. You could do everything right here within the TK Gen fill panel, which is cool. So what we can do is ramp through the three different versions. So here's version one. If I click this right here, this button, this arrow to the right, you'll see the second version and click it again. There's a third. So we're getting really nice results. Now we could generate again by clicking right here if we want to, or we could change the prompt. So this time, let me click right here and I'm going to type in watercolor painting and let's click generate again. But before I do, I do want to point this out. Whenever you click this 1024 button here, your original image does not get altered. It stays at its original file size. So that's very important. And you could close this if you want. We could just click the X right here and click don't save. Tony made it that way so you won't ever ruin your original file. So very cool. Thank you, Tony. Another thing I want to point out is you'll notice now it tells us what percentage we've used and the name of the prompt right here. So that's kind of very nice. I really appreciate that. Really helps you to stay organized and to understand what you've last done if you want to go and try something else out. So now let's click generate again. And now it's going to generate and make a watercolor painting and we'll see what we get. Okay, and now we get a watercolor painting and that looks really nice. Now let's try the second version, another really cool version, and here is the third. They all look really, really nice. Now you can experiment. Now if I wanted to try this again, I could shut this layer off. If I wanted to try a different value, say like 25%, let's click 25% and click generate. And again, you'll see that overlay over there. That is new. Click generate and we'll see what we get. Okay, so you see that's less like the original, but still very close. Now the higher up you go, the further away it's going to get from the original. So you can experiment. So here's the next version. Not bad. And here's the third version. And then I can shut this layer off. Or say, for instance, if I, if I liked this one right here, or let's try the second version. Let's say I like the first one the best. I can come here and click rasterize, and that'll clear out all that other space, and we'll just have a rasterized image, which is really nice. Now I can shut this off, so that'll save you a lot of file space. And we, we could come back and make this active and turn this on. And then we could decide what we want here. Now we could ramp through all the different versions, okay? And see which one we like the best. Now the, here's the oil paintings. And let's say, you know what? I like this one the best. So I could go ahead and click rasterize. And now that one's rasterized. So now I have an oil painting and I have a watercolor painting. And so we can continue to experiment expand the canvas and all that stuff. But I'm not going to get into all that today. I'll be making a lot of tutorials on this TK Gen fill panel. Now, before I move to the next image, I want to point out that this is only, if we click on size on the TK9 combo panel, we can see that this is 1024 by 683. Very small. I could not get a very big print out of this. So you would need some kind of software like Gigapixel AI or Topaz photo AI to upsize this image. So that's very important too. But that's the reason for using this 1024 button to get better results when we're trying to turn photographs into say like oil paintings or watercolor paintings or graphic art or whatever you would like. The sky is really the limit of what you can do. And it's so much fun to experiment. And one thing I did find out if you use up all your GenFill credits, you can still use GenFill. The uh, results may just be a little slower to generate, but you can still use it. So it's not like you're going to be shut off of GenFill. Before I do go to the next example, hey, let me show you something else. You see these buttons here, 1 to 1, 4, 4 to 3, 3 to 4, 16 by 9. Let's click on uh, 4 by 3. And let's type in here something. How about Halloween, pumpkin, witch, lighted candle, and let's click generate. So we can create art right from within Photoshop without going to Firefly. You'll get different results in Photoshop. Sometimes I still use Firefly because you get some pretty interesting results there too. Okay, so there we go. Hey, the eyes are looking better. I think uh, Firefly is getting better with eyes. Here's the second version. Okay, that's cool. Okay, now I could come here and click and 
I'm just going to cursor over here and now let's uh, come here and do a uh, graphic and see what happens and I'll generate this again. Okay, we got that, we've got this one. Okay, a little more graphic look. And that one, well, that one's really sinister and wild looking. And then we could come here again and let me see. I'm just going to cursor over here and I'll take out graphic and now I'll do a uh, oil painting. Let's see what happens. Click generate. Okay, so now we get more oil painting look. So you could continue to play around here. Well, that one's really cool. So that one's really scary. Now you can expand the canvas and have a lot of fun. But I just wanted to show you, in case you ever wondered, what are these buttons all about? Well, that's what they're all about. And if we look at the size here, if I click on size on the combo panel, you can see this is a 1408 by 1024, which matches the size up on the Firefly site. So this is really great. I'm just going to click cancel here and now we'll go on to the next example. Now this is just an Adobe stock image, but what we're going to do is you'll notice we have a new button here, this paintbrush. We can still make selections or we could use the paintbrush. I'll show you how to use the paintbrush first. So what we'll do is click on the paintbrush and what you need to do is pick a value here. Now remember, if you use these lower values, it'll stay closer to the original image but I wanna go away from the original image a little bit because I wanna add some boulders here. So I'm gonna to go to like 65% and I'm gonna type in here, boulders. And what I'll do is I'll just paint right over here. Now this is important, do not lift your brush. Paint it all in one stroke without lifting the brush because you don't wanna overlap because it'll change the opacity value. And you'll notice the brush is at 65% which corresponds to this button right here and we'll click generate. Okay, so you can see we're getting a really nice result. There's the first result, here's the second result. That looks really good. And this is what I mean by adding a couple elements that I was talking about in my last video, just to make the image a little bit more interesting. And then here is the final result. They're all pretty cool. So let's say I like this one the best. Now what I can do is, you know, I could use the paintbrush again, or this time I could, I'm just going to type my L key to get a lasso tool and I'll just lasso around this area and I'll put some more boulders in here and just like that. Now, after you've lassoed, you have to pick a value here. So, you know, if I click 35, you can see there's a 35% overlay on there and I could change that. I could change my mind. I could go to like 65% and you see it changes and boulders are still here, and you could add to this prompt whatever you want to do. Click Generate again, and we'll see what we get. Oh, that looks really cool. Here's the second result. That's nice too. And now here is the third result, and I like that too, but let's go back to the second. You know, I think I like the second result better. Now these numbers here, these percentage numbers, again, if you go with the lower numbers, it'll stay truer to the original image. So if I use like a lower number here, I may have not have gotten boulders here. So it's important. So I'm using these higher numbers up around 55 to say like 85. And so experiment with these numbers here, but 65% was working nice. And I love it now that we can see here that we have these percentages and the prompt name on the layer, which is really cool. So this will help you to blend whatever you're infilling onto the image and give you better results. And just as an experiment, let's click on the paintbrush. And when I do, it defaults at 100%. And what I'll do is at 100%, I'm just gonna paint over here and we'll see what kind of a result we get. And I still have that prompt borders in there and I'll click generate and we'll see if it's not gonna be as good. Let's find out. Okay, that's the result. We got some feet. Okay, let's look at the next result. That's not too bad. And here is the third result, some more feet. So you see the problem we have here? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this layer and we can click the trash can right here and delete that layer. Let's try it again. I'm gonna click on the paintbrush. This time I'm gonna go to 65% and let's just paint over this area right in here and see what we can get here. So let me go ahead and click generate. Okay, so now you can see that's working much better. There's the first, here's the second. That's not bad, and here's the third. Oh, we got some feet here too, but not quite, feet that look kind of like a rock as well. So 
That one didn't work out, but I'll tell you what, I like this one, and I like this one. I think I'm going to go with this one. This one looks interesting, but again, I can generate again, but play around with these percentages. You're going to find out they're going to be very, very helpful. Oh, by the way, you'll notice I used the brush, but now I have a lasso tool again. So the panel sends you back to the last tool you were using after you've clicked on brush here. So that's a nice feature. Thanks for that, Tony. Now let me go ahead and add a flock of birds up in here. So I'm going to use the lasso tool and I'm just going to go like this. And now we need to get a value here. I was playing around and I felt that if around 35%, I got a really nice blend. So let me click on the 35 button right here. And by the way, you can feather this. You see this little feather right here? Click this, opens up your Gaussian blur dialog. And right now it has 10 pixels of feathering. You can drag it to the right to increase the feathering or to the left to decrease the feathering. And then click OK. And now we soften that edge. Now I'm going to come here. Right now it says boulders. Click right here and we'll type in flock of birds. And let's see what we get. I'll click generate. And that looks really good. There's a flock of birds. Now let's ramp through these. Here's the second result. Here's the third. Hmm, that's kind of nice. I like the way they're arcing here. I think I'm going to go with that one. Now I'm going to show you another button. I don't think I've showed you this button yet. This button is the move button. So if you click it, it'll select those birds and it gives you a transform tool. And then you can come here and click and we can move this. So maybe I want my birds to be over this area right here, which will add a little bit of interest. But you can click those, move them. If you have the uh, TK9 plugin for Photoshop, you can click this transform button and change the size of them, transform them, change the way they're moving. And of course, you could do a command or control T to get that as well. But the combo panel makes things so much easier in Photoshop. I have one final thing to show you, and this is just a little crazy. And I saw this when watching an Adobe Live video on YouTube the other day. What I'm going to do is not use a marquee tool, but I'm going to click and hold here and get an elliptical marquee tool. So I guess it is a marquee tool, but it's elliptical. I'm going to hold my shift key down and I'm going to draw a perfect circle like right here. Now we could click and move this anywhere we want. I'm going to move it right here. And what I'm going to do is now right now, this is defaulted at 100%. If you don't click anything, this will be 100%. So I'm going to click and type reflective orb and click generate and let's see what kind of fun result we get i think it's going to be fun is that cool look at that orb right there okay let's see the second result that's pretty cool too and here's the third i'm going to go back i think i like the first result now again i can click on this move tool button and now i can take this and i can drag this anywhere on the image i want or i could click this transform button and I can make it larger. I can make it smaller like that. How about we have a nice little orb out here and then we can click this check to accept it. But isn't that cool? I know you're thinking, Dave, what the heck are you doing putting an orb in your image? I don't know. It's a kind of fun, don't you think? Anyway, this is the new TK Gen Fill update version 1.2.0. Please let me know what you think and leave a comment in the comments section below. I want to hear from you. Well, there you have it, everyone. This was a first look at the newly updated TK Gen Fill Panel version 1.2.0 with many nice updates to it. I love it. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a like, share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon, and don't forget to click all to get all notifications. Every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I will see you all right here next time, but until then, happy editing.